भारत ने चांद पर अपने दूसरे मिशन चंद्रयान टू को कामयाबी से रवाना कर दिया खलाई जहाज गुजशत हफ्ते तकनीकी खराबी के सब रवाना नहीं किया जा सका था भारतीय खलाई इदारे इसरा के मुताबिक पहले से कहीं मजबूत गाड़ी पर सवार एक अरब खाब चांद पर पहुंचेंगे Thanks for joining us here on France 24 this hour. I'm Jeannie Godjelet in Paris. Well, we'll start first with this news out of India and the country's space agency says it has just launched an unmanned spacecraft to the far side of the moon. That successful launch coming a week after a technical snag delayed liftoff as Delana de Souza reports. After a week long delay due to a fuel leak, scientists at the Indian Space Research Organization say they're ready to take a billion dreams to the moon the country plans on becoming the fourth in the world behind the united states russia and china to land a lunar spacecraft dubbed moon chariot in hindi the chandrayaan 2 is built almost entirely in india at 140 million dollars it costs a fraction of similar missions by other countries the spacecraft's orbiter is set to circle the moon imaging its surface and studying the atmosphere while the rover will carry out experiments while controlled by scientists in india the country's space program is a source of immense national pride and the prime minister has outlined an ambitious plan to send a crewed mission to space in the next 3 years when we will have been independent for 75 years or even before then a son or a daughter of india it could be anyone will go to space Monday's launch comes over a decade after India's first mission orbited the moon and searched for water back in 2008. Welcome back to GMT. India is about to reattempt the launch of its second lunar mission a week after it halted the scheduled blast off due to a technical snag. India's space agency hopes the Chandrayaan 2, that means Moon Vehicle 2, will be the first to land on the little explored south pole of the moon. The mission will focus on the lunar surface, searching for water and minerals and measuring moon quakes. Uh, well, we do have some live pictures coming to us now from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. in Sri Harikota Island as the countdown for lift off uh, is underway let's just listen in to launch the excitement building up here on your screens the close shot of the base where you will see shortly the s200 igniting on the ground minus 20 seconds minus 20 18 seconds now ab aap dhyan se apne screen pe dekhiye ab aakhri ke 10 second baki hain अब मैं कुछ देर के लिए अपनी वाणी को रोकूंगा आप ध्यान से देखिए सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो समय आप देख रहे हैं दो एस टू हंड्रेड सेकेंड प्लस फाइव सेकेंड दोनों का प्रचलन हो गया है और उससे छह सौ चालीस वाले भारतीय इलाके नौगन को ऊपर की ओर ले जा रहे हैं successful attempt there to launch the second lunar mission in a week for India after it halted the scheduled blast off due to a technical snag and uh, India space agency saying that the spacecraft will be taking a billion dreams to the moon now stronger than ever before uh, they really hoping that the Chandrayaan 2 will be the first to land on the moon's south pole it was uh, it's a big mission worth about 150 million India space agency has spent so 
far, and uh, India bidding to become just the fourth nation, uh, Russia, of course, the United States, China, to have landed a spacecraft on the moon. So a big moment and a proud moment for India. Thousands of people have gathered there at the launch site to witness this attempt. Uh, lots of people, dignitaries, school children as well there, and this has been carried, of course, live on television across India too. So a big moment, and I think it's been a successful one from what we can tell. India launching the Chandrayaan-2, it means moon vehicle 2, hoping uh, it will be the first to land on the little explored south pole of the moon. Where the Elventon ignition will happen. Okay, let's talk about this because India has launched its most ambitious space mission yet. New Delhi hopes the $145 million mission will be the first to land on the moon's South Pole. The country's space chief said that his agency had bounced back with flying colours after the first attempt was aborted. Our business reporter, Nitin Srivastavas, uh, joins us now from Delhi. Hey, Nitin, good to have you with us. I was going to ask you how much it cost, but I just read. So $145 million bucks. What does is, what is India hope to get out of this? Well, uh, India has been uh, been talking about uh, doing research, more research uh, uh, on the moon surface in terms of water, in terms of minerals, and also about moon quakes. And that's what the whole mission is all about. Uh, the Indian Space Agency has has obviously had this success into way back in 2008 uh, when the, that was the first Indian mission to moon. Of course, the the, the landing didn't, didn't take place, but then the, the all important discovery of finding water on the moon surface happened then, and that this is this is a program which actually aims to take this forward. Indeed. So, Nitin, you know, I'm going to have to ask you, because some people will be thinking about this. Um, India, a country that lacks a lot of infrastructure, a, company that, a country that has extreme poverty, I think more than 700 million Indians don't have access to a toilet. Um, really? Should they really be spending this sort of money on a space program? Well, this is something which has always been uh, debated over here in the last 30, 40, 50 years. But uh, there is another fact which uh, which says that uh, Indian space program has by and large been considered fairly successful uh, in the last 40, 50 years by Indians. The reason being it's it's been a homegrown, low-cost space research program. Uh, suppose you compare it with the, with, the, with, the, with the cost of the U.S. space program. Say it was uh, a few billion dollars in the late 1960s and 70s. Uh, this mission which costs uh, India 150 max US uh, uh, million dollars is, is much lesser. And then India has been doing a lot of weather forecasting. Uh, this space programs have been used for better missile technology. So yes, this has largely been seen as a success story. Of course, there are some grey areas and there are issues which are of concern still. Indeed. Didn't Srivastava, short and sweet, but we appreciate your time. Thanks very much. So we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us live from Delhi. It's DW News coming to you live from Berlin. India is off to the moon as the Chandrayaan-2 rocket successfully lifts off. 3, 2, 1, 0. The unmanned spacecraft. Hello and a very warm welcome to you. I'm Amrita Chima. India has successfully launched an unmanned spacecraft to the far side of the moon. The Chandrayaan-2 took off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center to cheers from thousands of onlookers. The launch had been delayed a week due to a technical glitch. The Chandrayaan-2 carries an orbiter, lander and rover. It will travel for two months before the lander, Vikram, touches down on the moon's surface near its south pole. A robotic rover, Pragyan, will then spend 14 days collecting a mineral and chemical samples for analysis. The mission is a major step for India's efforts to become a space superpower. Up to now, only the United States, Russia and China have landed spacecraft on the moon. Joining me now from Delhi is Rajeshwari Pillay Rajagopalan. She's the head of the Nuclear and Space Policy Initiative at the Observer Research Foundation. That's a think tank based in the Indian capital. Welcome, Rajeshwari. A big moment for India and its space program. Yes. What did you feel when you saw Chandrayaan 2 lift off today? No, I think this has been an exciting moment, not just for ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, India as a whole, but also for the whole world. This has become such a prestigious moment because there has been a global attention 
ever since U.S. President uh, Trump came into office, he talked about going back to the moon. Uh, there have been other countries such as India, uh, Russia, India, uh, China, and Japan who have been trying to go back to the moon. The moon uh, mission, uh, China has undertaken a couple of impressive measures there. Uh, it landed on the uh, far side of the moon earlier this year, in the beginning in June, January. Three years ago, it landed on the near side of the moon. So there have been quite a bit of attention, even with respect to the moon uh, moon missions, but also uh -huh. broader outer space itself has seen quite a bit of interest. Now, Rajeshri, when can we expect the actual landing to t uh, take place and what are the trickiest parts of this mission? So the landing itself is going to take place about 45 days from now. So around the September 1st week, September 6th or 7th, uh, is slated to uh, the, the period when uh, actually ISRO will uh, land its... Uh, the Chandrayaan will land there. And then you have the trickiest or the terror hours of about... Uh, when it can actually re uh, enter the uh, lunar orbit. And I think that's going to be the most tricky part of the whole mission. Uh, this was a tricky mission in the first part. The, cryo, the Chandrayaan split, uh, separates from the uh, from the rocket itself. That has happened. Uh, now it will be parked in the what you call the Earth's parking orbit, EPO. Uh, there it will do a couple of uh, maneuvers for, for the next few weeks and before it gets onto the lunar orbit. And I think that's going to be the next uh, major uh, uh, mission that is the major milestone for the mission in a sense. And of course landing, the soft landing, because even the landing is very tricky because even the landing, the place where to land will be decided only if moments before it actually does the real uh, landing. So it's a very complex and very difficult mission. Uh, and this is the most complex mission that India has undertaken uh, mm -hmm. for the first time landing on a non-terrestrial surface. Um, so it's a okay. big deal for India. A country. But tell us yeah. again, uh, uh, Rajeshwari, just how significant is a successful launch for India's space program? And it seems at this time, women are playing a significant role yeah. in this mission. That is something that has been uh, particularly attractive about the ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. ISRO has had a sizable number of women scientists who have led various projects. And in this regard, the, both the mission director, mission director as well as... Uh, Oh, it seems we seem to have lost our connection to Delhi.